five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. You're listening to only the best internet radio station in the world. This is your number one radio station. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We are back. We are back. Welcome to the Royal Judah Podcast Show. I am your host, Juma Bush. Thank you for joining the Royal Judah Podcast. Thank you for clicking on the Royal Judah Podcast. If this is your first time joining us, welcome to the tribe. As always, share the podcast with at least two people. That's right, two people. It takes two seconds to share with two people. We greatly appreciate you. I don't even know where to start, right? So we definitely want to let it be known that the Roar of Judah podcast show officially has its own website now. Let's get a round of applause for that. Be sure to check out www.theroarofjudah.org. Stay tuned for more updates. It's going to be a host of things on there. Be sure to share the roar of Judah.org. Your number one radio. With your family, your friends, your colleagues. Let them know the roar of Judah is up and live. Now, right off the bat, we want to shout out our sponsor for this episode. This episode is brought to you by Love and Rain Beauty Supply Company. I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. Love and Rain Beauty Supply Company. Now, the Love and Rain Beauty Supply Company's mission is that they believe that there's power in choosing products that are free from harsh chemicals, eco-friendly, and plant-based. That's awesome right there. Now, some of those products that they have are natural scrubs, beard care, shampoo bars, natural soap, lip balm, body oil, soothing salve, lotion bars, whip body scrub, bath salt, and more. Now you can find them at www.loveandrain.com and that's L-O-V-E-A-N-D-R-E-I-G-N. That's loveandrain.com. Now, I'm going to just tell you right off the bat, they have some awesome products on there. I've I've purchased some of those products, and they are amazing, uh, especially the Soothing Sal. Great product. The Beard Oil is a great product for the fellas out there. Ladies, they have so many different products, and these products are, are chemical-free, and they're natural. Okay, they're natural. So you definitely want to support Love and Rain Beauty Supply Company. Let's give a round of applause for the Love and Rain Beauty Supply Company. All right, all right. Listen, if you are not following the Roar of Judah on social media, please go and do that. The Roar of Judah on Facebook, the Roar of Judah on Instagram, the Roar of Judah on Twitter, and you can visit the website again www.theroarofjudah.org If you are interested in becoming a sponsor, you have a brand, a product, or a service that you would like to submit, please do so by emailing theroarofjudah at info at theroarofjudah.org For the people in the back, if you are interested in becoming a sponsor, you have a brand, product, or service that you would like to submit for a sponsorship for the Roar Judah, please email us at info at the of Judah.org. Really appreciate you. Really appreciate the sponsors. It is awesome to share the love. Uh, this is not my platform. This platform belongs to God. And I definitely want to help as many people as possible. Uh, let's partner. Let us partner together and let's make a difference not only in our own communities and our lives, but around the world, the globe, 
okay? Let's let's make an impact on the globe. So with that being said, there was something that I used to do in the beginning. Uh, not really sure how we got away from that, but we're going to incorporate that back in to the program. It is so important, and it is prayer. Yeah, that's right, prayer. So what we're going to do uh, before we kick off this episode is we're going to send up a prayer for those of you who may need prayer, for those of you who may not know how to pray. And you are listening to the Roy Judah podcast. We're going to pray with you, for you, and over you. So with that being said, let's jump right into this prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for another beautiful day. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for watching over us as we rested. Thank you for protecting us as we go out and as we come in. We know that you are always with us. No matter what our circumstances may be, we know that your peace surpasses all understanding. So right now, Father, for every ear, under the sound of my voice, I thank you for watching over them and protecting them and keeping them on this day. We have a heart full of gratitude for all you have done, all that you're doing, and what has yet to come. We want to say thank you. Thank you for everything. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us all say amen. Now, I felt that. Woo. Hey, man, listen, you know what time it is? Let's go to work. As always, get your pen, your pad, your mobile device, your iPad, your iPhone, your Android, whatever you, you work with. If you have a flip phone, as always, I don't know how you work that in this day and time. <laughs> get you a pen and a piece of paper or a pencil. And as always, let's go to work. This episode is entitled, Don't Look Back. I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. This episode is entitled, Don't Look Back. Now, I'm going to just be honest with you. Two different episode titles came out of this one scripture. And I have been putting it off and putting it off because I wanted to be clear on which one that I was supposed to be doing first. And I knew that it was this one because this one just flows. This is the first one. Uh, I believe this is going to be a two part series, but this first one is special. This one again is entitled don't look back. So right off the bat, let's jump into this. Genesis 19 is where we're going. I will be reading out of the New Living Translation. I prefer the King James Version, but for this particular uh, moment, we're going to use the NLT. Now you can use whatever version you prefer. Uh, If you want to follow along, find the New Living Translation. Genesis 19 and I'll give you a moment to find that and as always when you find it say amen now let me give you a little backdrop on this particular scripture that we're going to be coming out of Uh, I always read the chapter before uh, the chapter before in, in chapter 18 Sarah is being told that she's going to have a baby, right? And later on in the chapter, Abraham is praying about Sodom and Gomorrah. And that if God would save 50 people, then he said 40, and then he said 30, and then he said 20, then he said 10. If you're not familiar with the story, please go back and read it. It's very, very powerful. Verse 1. That evening, the two angels came to the entrance of the city of Sodom 
Lot was sitting there, and when he saw them, he stood up to meet them. Then he welcomed them and bowed with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, come to my home to wash your feet and be my guests for the night. You may then get up early in the morning and be on your way again. Oh no, they replied. We just spend the night out here in the city square. But Lot insisted, so at last they went home with him. Lot prepared a feast for them, complete with fresh bread made without yeast, and they ate. But before they retired for the night, all the men of Sodom, young and old, came from all over the city and surrounded the house. They shouted to Lot, Where are the men who came to spend the night with you? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. So Lot stepped outside to talk to them, shutting the door behind him. Please, my brothers, he begged, don't do such a thing. Look, I have two virgin daughters. Let me bring them out to you and you can do with them as you wish. But please leave these men alone, for they are my guests and are under my protection. Stand back, they shouted. This fellow came to town as an outsider and now he's acting like our judge. We'll treat you far worse than those other men. And they lunged toward Lot to break down the door. But the two angels reached out, pulled Lot into the house, and bolted the door. Then they blinded all the men, young and old, who were at the door of the house, so they gave up trying to get inside. Meanwhile, the angels questioned Lot. Do you have any other relatives here in the city? They asked. Get them out of this place. Your sons-in-law, sons, daughters, or anyone else, for we are about to destroy this city completely. The outcry against this place is so great, it has reached the Lord, and he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot rushed out to tell his daughter's fiancés, Quick, get out of the city. The Lord is about to destroy it. But the young men thought he was only joking. At dawn, the next morning, the angels became existent. Harry, they said to Lot, take your wife and your two daughters who are here. Get out right now or you will be swept away in the destruction of the city. When Lot still hesitated, the angel seized his hand and the hands of his wife and his two daughters and rushed them to safety outside the city. For the Lord was merciful. When they were safely out of the city, one of the angels ordered, run for your lives and don't look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains or you will be swept away. Oh no, my Lord, Lot begged. You have been so gracious to me and saved my life and you have shown such great kindness, but I cannot go to the mountains. Disaster will catch up to me there and I will soon die. See, there is a small village nearby. Please let me go there instead. Don't you see how small it is? Then my life will be saved. All right, the angel said, I will grant your request. I will not destroy the little village, but Harry, escape to it, for I can do nothing until you arrive there. Lot reached the village just as the sun was rising over the horizon. Then the Lord rained down fire and burning sulfur from the sky on Sodom and Gomorrah. He utterly destroyed them along with the other cities and villages of the plain, wiping out all the people and every bit of vegetation. But Lot's wife looked back as she was following behind him, and she turned into a pillow of salt. Abraham got up early that morning and hurried out to the place where he had stood in the presence of the Lord. He looked out across the plain towards Sodom and Gomorrah and watched as the columns of smoke rose from the cities like smoke from a furnace. But God had listened to Abraham's request and kept Lot safe, removing him from the disaster that engulfed the cities on the plain. Again, that's Genesis 19. Whew. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. Right off the bat, right off the bat. Again, the title of this episode is Don't Look Back. Right off the bat, I want to just dive straight in. We going all the way in. Isn't it a ironic how... God will send help in your time of need 
too often in our lives we allow the things around us to become common and we forget that we have been called and we have been chosen the ironic thing that I love about this story because there's so many different variables going on in the story but the beautiful thing that I love about the stories is that the angels were on a mission not because of Lot but because of Abraham's petition so you have to go back into chapter 18 to see that Abraham had petitioned right so the angels were on a mission and Lot just happened to be one of the recipients of the petition of Abraham. Now, when you go back in chapter 18 and you look, Abraham's original petition was, Lord, if there are 50 people in the city. Now, this conversation is going on between God and Abraham, and he is petitioning on behalf of the city to God. Now, he's saying, if there's 50, and then he said 40, and then he changed his mind and he said 30, and then he changed his mind and he said 20, and he finally said, Lord, if there's 10, would you not save the city? So as we fast forward into Genesis 19, again, Lot is a recipient of the petition of Abraham. So the city is about to be destroyed. And the angels are coming to save whoever is willing to get out. Now, you got to understand, Sodom and Gomorrah was a city full of sin and wickedness, right? As we look in verse 5, the men wanted to have sex with the, the angels, Now, if you know anything about biblical history, this is not the first time that this has happened. We can go back and look and see that the fallen angels were having sex with the people of the earth then. I'm not even going to go into that, but know that this is not the first time. So now, Lot is trying to petition the men, hey, listen, man, Y'all wicked. We don't need no parts of this, okay? I got two daughters. Y'all can do whatever y'all want, but leave these fellas alone, right? These are my guests, and I will protect them. My question to you is, what are you willing to protect in order to see the goodness and the mercy of God on your life? Now, the second part of that question is this. What are you willing to let go of? Who are you willing to let go of to see the mercy, the grace, and the favor of God on your life? Those are two questions. I'm going to leave you with those two questions, but I want you to seriously think about those, and we're going to keep moving right along. You have to understand that these men were in iniquity, Now, there are different forms of sin, and no sin is greater than the other sin, right? So you have sin, you have trespasses, you have transgressions, and then you have iniquities. Iniquity is the highest form of sin. Iniquity, to put it in uh, general terms, iniquity is knowing right from wrong, and you have disregarded it, and you're going to do it anyway. It is similar to adultery you know it's wrong but you do it anyway now i want you to wrap your mind around this in verse 13 the angels say for we are about to destroy this city completely the outcry against this place is so great the outcry of this place is so great it has reached the lord 
and he has sent us to destroy it. Aren't you grateful, my Lord? Here we go. I hear you, Holy Spirit. Aren't you grateful that what you were in was not so far gone? You hear me? That was not so far gone that it became an outcry. And the Lord sent destruction, hell and fire to destroy you, my Lord. Mm, mm, mm. You got to understand that God is merciful. All sin, you hear me? All sin, all knowing God, He is so merciful. And He has allowed this wickedness to carry on for far too long. God always sins what you need when you need it before it's too late before death Woo. before destruction before you can destroy yourself God always sends a warning this is what is going on in Genesis 19 he's sending a warning ahead of time it's time for you to get out it's time to come out of what you in Woo. Come on, Holy Spirit, work. Let's work. It's time for you to come out of what you in. I don't know who this is for. It's time for you to come out of what you're in. You cannot continue to live life in what you're in. You have to let it go. Time is of the essence, my Lord. You don't have time. See, that's what's going on in this story. The angels have been sent to give the warning you don't have time lot you got to get out whoever this is for you don't have time this is your warning you don't have time it's time to come out the warning has been sent for far too long the warnings come and we ignore them thinking that we have time but we don't have time no man knows the day or the hour do you hear me Listen to me. No man knows the day or the hour. It is time. The warning has been sent. Whatever you in. And you know it's not right. It's time to come out of it. The situationship. It's time to come out of it. The fear. It's time to come out of it. The frustration. The anxiety. The worry. Whatever your situation may be. It's time to come out of it. The angels have sent the warning to Lot and his family and even extended. Grace has extended to the daughter's fiancés and they like, he tripping. Isn't, isn't it ironic how when we become renewed in our mind and we go back to some of the people and we, we give them a warning and we say, hey, is you, you need to make a change in your life because this is the right way how people will mock and laugh at you they will mock and laugh at you but the moment something tragic happens in their life you're the first person that they call please pray for me such and such is going on in my life please pray for me Don't make excuses. See, when we start getting down into verse 14 and 15, the angels are, this is like now, let's go. We got to get up out of here. Lot is still slow poking around. And the angels like, we ain't got time. The time has ran out. The sand in the hourglass is over. You got to get out, get your wife and your two daughters and get out or you will be swept away. Thank God that he did not sweep you away when he was destroying the things in your life that were no longer needed. Thank God that you did not get swept away with the foolishness. Thank God that you did not get swept away with the chaos that was going on around you. He pulled you out. He warned you, and then he pulled you out. 
Thank God for your yes. Let me say that. Somebody needs to know that. Thank God for your yes. Because your yes allowed you to be pulled out. Whatever God is calling you out of, don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Go with haste. Because what's on the other side is going to be better than what you in. See, in verse 16, Lot was hesitating. And he was hesitating to the point that the angels had to grab his hand. They used the word seized. They grabbed his hand and the hands of his wife and his two daughters, and they rushed them out the city. That means they was pushing them out of the city. Ain't no time for nothing else but to get out. Listen, I feel that thing. For whoever this is for, you need to get out right now. Whatever it is, only you know what it is, but it's time for you to get out. There's no time to wait. There's no time to hesitate. There's no time to second guess. It's time for you to get out of whatever it is that you are not supposed to be in. Then the angel said this. Run for your lives. Listen to me. Whenever God sends you a warning and he tells you to run for your life, you run. And don't you ever, ever look back. Don't look back back because whatever he's pulling you out of whatever he's calling you out of it is for your good there's no reason to look back what you lost is gone what he brought you out of is gone it's over he is a redeemer he is a savior so whatever he has for you on the other side is better than what he's pulling you out of, than what he's calling you out of. You have to hearken your heart and say yes and don't look back. I don't care how good the relationship was. I don't care how good the sex was. I don't care how good the money was. I don't even care how much you thought you was in love with that person. When he calls you out, don't look back. Lot said, listen, I know the city's about to be destroyed. Can I just go over here? Can I just go over here to this little small village and be out the way? That's all I'm asking. The angels granted his request. So they let Lot go over to the little village over here on the side, out the way. But you have to understand that everything around Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. You have to be very mindful of who and what you have in your life because sometimes, and I'll say it again, sometimes the people that are around us, whatever they're doing could cause destruction in our lives. My Lord. Woo. And to top it all off, as they were leaving, as they were escaping, as they were in a hurry, the angels said, do not, and I repeat, do not look back. Don't look back. Ain't nothing for you to look back at is what I got out of that. God is pulling you out of this thing, and there's nothing for you to look back at. Don't look back. That's the only request. Don't look back. That's all you got to do. Don't look back. And Lot's wife, and Lot's wife, I'm going to say it again. And Lot's wife looks back and turns to a pillow of salt. I want you to hear me very clearly. When God redeems you, when God saves your life, and he pulls you out of whatever you've been through, the hardships, the heartaches, the heartbreaks, whatever he pulls you out of, there is nothing, and I mean nothing, worth looking back at. I want you to hear me clearly. God is a redeemer. He is a savior. There is nothing worth looking back into your past for. Where he's taking you is to a new place. And with that being said, you are loved, you are cared for, and you are much needed. Don't look back. I love you, tribe. One love.